Hi, this is uh, John Reed, Sapphire Now 2014. Carlos Bustamante of Stanford University, how are you doing? Great, it's a real pleasure to be here. I know you were admiring our fern, it's pretty nice, huh? I, I feel like <laughs> I'm on the Zach Galifianakis show yeah, it's, between it's, two ferns. It's a classy look. Uh, <laughs> we're we're going to be talking about uh, really important issues around uh, uh, genome data challenges. and uh, You've been talking, I guess, with a bunch of companies, including SAP. What are the challenges you guys are trying to tackle here? So uh, there are two big challenges that I think the community faces. The first challenge um, has to do with uh, large-scale data integration. We um, currently face a huge problem of how we begin to analyze and interpret human genomes. Um, the data is siloed, every place has their own genetic data, and we are not reaping the full power. Um, and so one of the things we're really excited about is the opportunity to break down those silos and uh, begin to bring those data together. I think the second big challenge is that for far too long, much of the genetic um, data that's been collected and the studies that have been done have focused almost exclusively on populations of European descent. And we think that's problematic. We really need to go global. And mm -hmm. so figuring out how to create the right incentive structure, the networks of collaborators so that everybody can benefit from the genomics revolution is of utmost importance to me. So let's fast forward like uh, a few years, maybe five. If, if we make some progress on these issues you're talking about, what would some of the positive benefits be, do you think? Well, I think the, the immediate goal um, is to create um, an ecosystem, for lack of a better word, where we can bring together genetic data, literature review, experimental data, so that when you go to the doctor and you have your genome sequence, which I'll bet you you will, you will win, you know, within your lifetime, um, we can really give you back meaningful information mm -hmm. so that if you carry a mutation in a gene that you know, maybe predisposes you to cancer, we'll know that and we'll be able to you know, tell you about that. Or if you have a mutation that um, impacts your cardiovascular risk, we can yeah. you know, uh, tackle that. And uh, likewise, if, if you're thinking about a particular um, use case in cancer, um, we really believe that sequencing of the person's genome and the tumor is going to become yeah. standard of care. So once the genome and the, and the tumor are sequenced, we need to compare them, figure out what made the tumor so genetically distinct, which is why it's sort of gone off and is now proliferating, right. and then how to target it. And right now, we're far away from having a complete picture, a complete catalog of what those genetic alterations are. Um, and we're far further away from being able to deploy in healthcare systems yeah. tools and approaches that you know, can, can really capitalize on that. Yeah. That's where we need to be. And just to be clear for those watching, you and SAP, and I think you said something like 150, so you have a lot of companies that are an organization trying to address this issue. Right. So there's an organization called the Global Alliance that's come together to begin to break down the barriers for genetic data sharing. Okay. It's something akin to the World Wide Web uh, consortium that uh, built the rules for how the World Wide Web operates. Um, uh, along with that, there's a there's an NIH-funded project we're a part of called ClinGen, and what ClinGen is is seeking to do is to get um, clinical testing labs which are sequencing the very most important genes. So the, for example, BRCA1 and 2, the genes that are involved in hereditary breast cancer and ovarian cancer. Um, to get the clinical labs that are collecting those data, to deposit them in a public database that we can then use to improve our annotation. And at Stanford, what we're doing is taking those data and then developing machine learning algorithms that can learn from the data um, as it's curated by uh, sort of the world's top clinical geneticists. Gotcha. And we're starting with uh, cancer, cardiovascular disease, an area called pharmacogenomics, which is the genetics of drug response, and then bridging out to all the other domains of medicine. Right. I do want to touch on, you guys also have a partnership with SAP directly around a few things, which resulted in a bunch of HANA boxes, I guess, being shipped over to Stanford. What, what's going on with that? You just got the boxes recently, I guess? Well, it's, uh, it's a real privilege to collaborate with you guys on this. Um, it's a project that um, 
actually goes uh, directly up to Hasse Plotner, who thought it'd be a great idea to you know, come together on this. And um, so what we're doing is um, figuring out where the bottlenecks are in uh, the processes that we have for genome sequencing and analysis and trying to tackle them head on. And in particular, you know, we, we can think about bottlenecks that occur, bef you know, as you're sequencing and then bottlenecks that occur after you've sequenced and you're trying to do data integration. And, and we're really kind of focusing on that second part of the problem. And uh, it's just been really extraordinary to, to see first the speed ups and then secondly to think about what the possibilities are for unstructured data and how they can really begin to help us improve the annotations. Well, good luck with this really important work and look for a check-in maybe next year. Absolutely. Well, Thanks it's a, a real pleasure to be here. Great. Thank you.